morning. I am not I am not going to preach over however long it takes for that sand to run out of that hourglass. <laughs> They're saying 20, 30 minutes, so that's what I'm shooting for, so I'm not wasting any more time. How many brought a Bible today? <laughs> This book right here has gotten me through 35, going on 40 years of hell. I understand. I didn't experience hell until I got saved. I mean, everything was fine, you know. I had money until I got in the ministry. Everybody liked me until I got in the ministry. I had friends until I got in the ministry. I mean, everything was going well with me until I got in the ministry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, what's wrong with him? He doesn't fit anymore. He, he, I don't like him anymore. He's always in my face about God. You know? But this book has caused me to pay all my bills for 40 years. It's kept me healthy. I mean, I am a healthy young man. I really am. I mean, I just walk in divine health. I practiced, uh, you know, getting sick, getting healed, getting sick, getting healed. I practiced that for a while. I decided to move on to divine health. I like divine health better than getting sick and getting healed and getting sick and getting healed. This book has done all of those things for me. It brought a beautiful woman into my life. Woo-hoo! I got a great team of people that love God, and I'm telling you, that prayer call Thursday night, it sounded like you were Christians. I mean, here's what I heard. If, if I was God sitting in heaven and I heard all of your prayers Thursday night, I would, would have responded like this. They're asking for what? F for that reason? They're not asking for their self. They're actually asking according to my will to be a witness in the earth. Angels, get moving now before they change their mind. I, who are these people? I have never experienced prayers like that in a long time. Asking on the behalf of someone else instead of saying, God, I want this. And here's my 10 list of things I want you to do for me this week. Powerful. Matthew chapter, I forgot, 22. 37. And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. They, uh, they asked him, What's the great commandment? What's the, what's the greatest commandment? And um, Jesus says, Well, you know, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Probably going to really mess up the camera people. But I want you to just follow me over here. Because these ten commandments are just absolutely amazing. You see, Jesus wasn't doing away with the ten and simplifying it to the two, he says the whole law, the whole 613 is based on these two concepts. The first, the first side of this is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like unto this, love others like you would love yourself. This, this is the great commandment. This is, this is it. This sums up life. This is what life is all about. Are you with me? Now, we talked the last time about the first five steps or five steps towards signs, wonders, and miracles. So therefore, you're not going to have any signs, wonders, and miracles if you don't love the miracle worker. You're not going to have any signs, wonders, and miracles if you have other gods before the miracle worker. You're not going to have any signs, wonders, and miracles if you take his name for selfish desires. 
In the name of Jesus, I want this. In the name of Jesus, I want this. In the name of Jesus. Magic, magic little phrase, tagline. I want this. In the name of Jesus. Well, you know, what, what, what's his name? His name is his purpose, his assignment, his commission in life. I'm asking according to his plan and purpose for mankind right now. That's how I use his name properly. To use his name in vain is just try to get something for God and using his name to get it. No, you're not going to have any signs, wonders, and miracles if you are not in agreement with the Messiah's plan and purpose for mankind. But if I ask the Father, whatever I ask the Father according to Messiah's plan and purpose in life, which is he's not willing that any should perish but all come to repentance. He, he, he goes to seek and save that which is lost. He came to save people from their sins. If I ask according to that plan and purpose, the Heavenly Father will not withhold anything from me. But people use his name in vain. You're not going to have any signs, wonders, and miracles if you're not in God's plan. The signs and wonders and miracles are going to happen when you're in God's plan. So Jesus says, love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You're not going to have any signs, wonders, and miracles if you can't keep the Sabbath. What's keep the Sabbath? Learn the Torah. Like learn, learn his plan, purpose. If you can't spend time with the miracle worker, you're not going to have any signs, wonders, and miracles. And then you're not going to have any signs, wonders, and miracles if you don't understand spiritual authority. Yes, sir. That's, oh, wow. yes, sir. I mean, it starts with mom and dad. Yes, mom. Yes, dad. Yes, and then it moves on to yes, pastor. And then it moves on to yes, boss. And then it moves on to yes, God. Yeah. It's a progression of understanding authority. If you do not understand authority, you will not be able to get the devil to submit to anything. Exactly, sir. Yes, sir. If you try to take authority over demonic activity for signs, wonders, and miracles, and you tell the devil to bow his knee and get out, he'll turn to you and say, you rebellious little snot, I'm not obeying you. Until we understand authority, we'll never be one who's our, our in authority. Yes. Signs, wonders, and miracles. We've got to love God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that, that just includes figuring out that He's God and He's Savior. Yes, I've got to get rid of all the other gods. Yes. I, I can't use His name selfishly. I've got to use it according to the plan and purpose. Yes? I've got to remember the Sabbath. and I've got to remember the Sabbath. How often? Every Friday night at sunset. Because yeah. you're going to forget because there's going to be a ton of stuff that's going to draw your attention. You're not going to have a, God's not going to use you for signs, wonders, and miracles if you can't just spend time with him. And again, what does that mean? Learning the Torah. All the law, all the Torah, all the instructions are in life is, is kind of in two categories. Love God, love others. If you've ever seen the cross, we don't need to go back over there, but we, we still have a cross in our sanctuary. Some churches got rid of that ugly thing. That old rugged thing. You know what it is? It's love God. Love others. If we're going to have signs, wonders, and miracles, we have to love God and love some people. Excuse me. Some people? Oh man, that's where it's going to get tough. I'm always ready to take a trip down these last five. <laughs> Love people. Here we go. The sixth step. I mean, he's got the first five. That's the ones we covered before. The sixth step we get from Exodus 20 and verse 13, which would be the sixth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Now, how many has wanted to kill somebody? I mean, you know, you, you didn't really get out a 45 Magnum or something. But you wanted to kill them with your words. I mean, you wanted to slap them. You, want, you, you wish they'd just walk in front of a car or something. I mean, 
You, you, you've just had visions of them not existing anymore. You know, why can't we get rid of this person? Why does this person, only the good die young? That's wrong. Why don't the bad die before they're born? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Thou shalt not kill. I just, just think about this. Well, I've never murdered anybody. Yeah? You've had thoughts. I like kicking cats. <laughs> Let's get on another verse here. 2 Peter 3, 9. Well, that's Old Testament. We've been delivered from the law. I can kill now. <laughs> Jesus did away with the law. I mean, that's as, as insane as it is, isn't it? Jesus did away with the law, so I can kill now. Amen. Well, go ahead and see how that works out for you. 2 Peter 3, 9. 2 Peter 3, 9. He is not willing that any should perish. Catch the heart of God. He's not willing that what? Any should perish. But that all come to saying the little prayer that Jesus died for you, you can go to heaven. No, that all come to what? Repentance. He's not willing that you cast off restraint, get off track, not, not find your call and purpose. He's not willing that should happen to you. He, he's willing that all would come to a change of mind. Are you catching the heart? Catching the heart. 1 Timothy 2.4 Who will have all men to be saved? Okay, I, I, Here's how I have signs, wonders, and miracles. I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. But in order to have signs, wonders, and miracles, I've got to realize what the signs, wonders, and miracles are for. Yeah. It's so people get saved. It's so people repent. The signs, wonders, and miracles are not so that you can say, look at me. The sign, wonder, and miracle is so that someone will change from not believing to believing. He's not willing that any should perish. He, he, he would have that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. There is so much lies out there. If you figure 30,000 denominations, there's got to be a little error going on someplace out there. So God wants people to know the truth. If you know the truth, have an intimate relationship with the truth, what will happen? You will be made free. Yes. So I have to love people. Who do I have to love? The unsaved, the ones that don't know the truth, the ones that I'd like to kill. Those are the ones that God is saying, I, I want you to do something about them. And you have to understand, they're not saved. Duh. They don't know the truth. So how can they be doing the truth? But if I love them, like I love myself, oh, there's, that kind of brings it. How many like someone to kill you? You know, there's sometimes I, I have said to my wife, my God, just shoot me, put me out of my misery, you know? You look at me like, you know, you guys are so holy, you never do anything like that, you know. How, how, many, how many in your lifetime actually prayed to God to kill you? Yeah, God just kill me. Get rid of me. I wished I was dead. I wished I was never born. How many's done that? Okay, but then, you know, after you, you know, did that, about three minutes later, you stub your toe and you're, you're believing God for healing. You know, it doesn't it it last that long. Yeah. You stick your head under water and you're coming back up. You want a breath. You know, people fight for life. First Timothy 1.12. And I thank God. This is Paul writing to Timothy. I thank God. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me for they, he counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry. What's the ministry? Other people. See, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not in the ministry until you get past yourself. 
You're not in ministry to bless yourself. That means somebody else is in the ministry that's helping you get blessed. That doesn't put you in the ministry. Uh, love God. Well, I love God. Good. Now let's, now let's try the real purpose that Jesus came, and that was what? For somebody else other than himself. It's, it's a tough thing to cross over there. I took one of my ministers and made that person start serving. They loved God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength as long as they didn't have to serve somebody else. Well, I prophesied in your name. I cast down devils in your name. I preached many wonderful sermons. But you never connected we, with me in my ministry of helping people. You, you were still thinking about yourself and the whole thing. Yes, sir. Once you know the truth, you're what? You're free. Yeah. You're free. Oh, I get it. This is about people. Yes. And I love it. God starts with the, with the lowest form of people, the ones you want to kill. If he can get you to start loving the ones you want to kill, the rest of this list moves on easier. Somebody had to love you. So I should finish reading it. Counted me faithful. You know what faithful means? Like show up? You know, one qualification for miracles is like you have to be present. Where are the miracles going to occur? You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm with you in spirit, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that forever, you know. Just like Reverend Cotty said, I can't anoint you with oil through the camera because as soon as I touch my finger on that camera, you're not going to be able to see anything. Because we're going to smear it. You know what I mean? <laughs> a marriage is not going to work out. if I, You know, I love you, honey. I'm at a hotel with another God, but, you know, I love you. No, the, your love's got to go beyond just talk. Yeah. Putting me in the ministry... And, and then he moves on and says this, who, was, who I before was a blasphemer, a persecutor. I was injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am chief. You're not going to love others until you realize you're a worthless fill in the blank. Well, I'm saved. Well, how long have you been saved? Well, I know the truth. Well, how long ago was it that you were pretty stupid? Amen. Yeah. So don't kill somebody because, you know, it's just like you two weeks ago should have been killed. All right. How many wants to take this step of moving into loving others? Say this, I repent for not caring about others. I preach in Bible school, I think it's Bible school, the value of a human soul. I mean, that's just one, of, I don't know if it's the first year, I forgot. What, pardon me? Uh, people are not ready for value of human soul until third year. That's probably true. We're just trying to get them saved themselves, right? Yeah. But the value of a human soul, you've got to get it. Every soul is valuable. It's an eternal creature that's either going to find its destiny with God or it's going to be lost for eternity. I repent for not caring about others. I repent for judging others because I was a sinner too. I repent for not being a witness to them. See, it's easy to judge them, but why not be a witness to them instead of judging them? I realize that all need to have a witness. And I am that witness. 
Thank you for putting me in the ministry. But see, ministry is about others, not yourself. Amen? We doing pretty good? Okay, seventh step. Everybody say number seven. Exodus 20, 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Genesis 2.24, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother. Has anybody ever read this whole verse? A man shall do what? Leave his father and mother. And shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. <clears throat> couple of things happens there. We have mama boys because they haven't left mama yet. So they'll never be the man of their house. And then we have women, I'm going home to mama. Here's the thing. If you make the bed, sleep in it. Yeah. Robert Connie tells people that we turn two bedrooms at our house into offices so that children cannot come home. You wanted to get married? You wanted that relationship? Work it out. It's your deal now. Well, that's cruel. Going home to mama is not help. Being a mama boy and you're special more than anybody else is no help. Be a man. No woman wants to be married. Well, at least Reverend Connie doesn't want to be married to a mama's boy. But I agree. I think every woman wants a strong man to be a good leader they can trust in. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You, you, you got to leave mom and dad, and you have to be the man of your house, and you have to cleave to your spouse. Instructions for life. How do you love others? Well, you have to be committed to them. That's how you do that. Revelation 21.8 But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. That's not old covenant. That's the future. Everybody say, ooh. <laughs> kind of scary, huh? Well, I'm saved. Saved from what? Well, you made your little confession, but you're still sleeping around. I don't know. That's pretty plain. 1 Corinthians 10.8 Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day 23,000. In one day. You know why the devil uses sex? Because it works better than anything else. Can you tell me one movie that doesn't have a sex scene in it? Even documentaries. I mean, my God, you can't hardly turn on anything anymore. Advertisements. I mean, somehow it's connected to sex. You know, like chewing gum is connected to sex. Mouthwash connected to sex. Everything's connected to sex. We're flooded with it. Why? Because the devil knows every day 23,000 people is going to fall. And he knows they're going to burn in the fire of brimstone because of it. Well, I'm saved. Well, don't do it anymore. Yeah. If you don't do this anymore, then you're saved. Yeah. You have been saved from that sin. Yeah. But don't say you're saved from that sin if you're still doing that sin. You haven't been saved from it yet. Well, Jesus did away with all that. 
Okay, well, this is what Jesus said, Matthew 5, 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. If your right eye offends you, pluck it out. Do you, do you understand how many blind men would be in the world today if we just did what Jesus said here? It was, it was kind of a joke. I was... Sorry, you know. If your right hand offends you, cut it off. It's been said, whoever shall put away his, oh, excuse me, and cast it from you for it's, it is profitable for you that one of your members should perish and not your whole body should be cast into hell. This is Jesus talking. He didn't do away with this law. In fact, he, he, sh he, he, he put the bar up even higher. He said, you can do this by just lusting in your heart, not even an act. Yeah. Just thinking about it. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. And then he goes on to say, it's been said, whoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But it has been said. That's what the rabbi said. That's what the uh, Taka note says. Yeah. Jesus said, well, that's what you say. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what I say. Whosoever shall put away his wife, save for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall uh, marry her that is divorced commits adultery. A little hard to understand, but what he's saying is, if the only reason you're getting a divorce is because you saw some other hot chick, yeah. you, you, you want to upgrade. He said, this is fornication, this is adultery. And you're going to hell because of it. No signs, wonders, and miracles if you're still doing this. Now, fornication, whoremonger, same Greek word. Are you ready? Pornos, pornea, pornography. That is pornography. Adultery. Well, that's, that's kind of a... It's kind of a word out there, a little farther out there, you know. How about pornography? That kind of brings it back to... What's that mean? To sell, to prostitute, harlot, unlawful, lust of either sex, incest, and idolatry. So in these scriptures, there's an unlawful affection to their mother and father instead of their spouse. That I lust what they can do for me because my husband is not doing that for me. Pornography. How many figures the pornography thing? Do I have to talk about that? With that silence, I probably need to. Do you understand that's rampant in the church? It is rampant in the ministry. Man, I'm sorry. It is so quiet in here. I probably should have an altar call for all those that are involved in pornography. Oh, God, is there anybody here that... Well, how many here just a few moments ago wanted to kill somebody? So what's the difference? That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh, well, this one's worse than what? No, it's still not the plan and purpose of God, and you don't know how to love people. If you're committing adultery, you do not love your spouse whom you're supposed to cleave to. Amen. Gay, lesbian, it, it, it doesn't matter. If you're lusting outside of God's plan, it's called burning hell. Jesus raised the bar. I mean, if you're a guy and you, you even like the looks of another guy, you're borderline weird, all right? All right. How many wants to repent? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've never done that. <clears throat> oh, I'm sure you at least lusted mom and dad because your spouse didn't tell you what you wanted to hear. I'm sure, you know, you guys, your head turned at some time or another. 
I wasn't going to take this long. But, you know, this, this 23,000 in one day. If you repent of this, you, you are not a part of that 20,000 that's going to fall to that. Say, I repent of adultery. Physical or spiritual. I, release, I realize I deserve death. But I receive my forgiveness. Now, come on, just think about that. I receive my forgiveness. See, this is what the cross is about. This is what grace is about. Grace is not so that you can do it. Grace is so you're empowered not to do it anymore. I'm free from it. I will now cleave to my spouse. If you have one, don't cleave to somebody else's spouse. But if, if you're married, I will now cleave to my spouse. Okay, a couple of you wasn't sure that you wanted to do that. All right. I will keep myself pure. All right, praise God. I got to move on a little faster, don't I? Because this, this thing's starting to run out. Number eight. If you weren't such sinners, we could have been through this by now. Lord, I taught on this back in 2009 or six or something, you know. We're just finally getting it figured out now. Thank God. Number eight. Step eight. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Luke says, give, six, Luke 6, give and it'll be given. Press down, shaken together, running over. With the same measure that you meet out, it'll be measured to you again. So if you want more, don't steal it, give. Do you, do you understand the difference here? Well, how am I going to love others? Well, don't take their stuff. How am I going to love others? Give to them. Malachi 3.8, God says, will you quit stealing from me? Will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. But you say, where have we robbed you? In tithes, plural, divine order of giving. Tithes and offerings, plural. Some people give a tithe and a offering. Read the book. It's an S on the end of it. Just thought I'd mention it. You're cursed with a curse. Why? Because, again, you're not loving anybody else. Yeah. You're, you're taking the money that is supposed to go to Messiah's ministry to love people, get them saved, get them delivered, get them to repent, turn around, have eternal life, but you take that money and keep it for yourself. You're not going to see a sign, wonder, and miracle in finances or anything else if you don't give. Am I making sense to you? So what's this mean? Well, you're taking what does not belong to you. It's as simple as that. Thou shalt not steal. Don't take what does not belong to you. God says if you give, you'll have more than enough. So if you have more than enough, there's no need to take anything. We first rob God. By not doing the divine order of giving and the 12 blessings of a tither and give and it'll be given, pressed down, shaken together. So because we rob God of that opportunity to bless us, well, then we don't have the blessing of God. So then we steal from somebody else. But it started first with stealing from God. Who, who, who wants to take this step? Hey, it's on the way to signs, wonders and miracles. Would Heath Chapel agree with me today that once you start obeying God, you saw signs, wonders, and miracles in your finances? Yes. He'll stand up here and tell you. Yes. But we have to do this. Yes. We have to decide. It, 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 my money is not my money. I'm just a steward of it. Yes. All right, here we go. I repent for stealing. I realize your plan for my provision. You, you want me blessed. I will now be a giver and not a taker. I will now be faithful in my tithes and offerings from this day forward. It sounds like, you know, we, we will wed or something there or something, doesn't it? You know. Number nine. Everybody say number nine. Number nine. Exodus 2016. And thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. How are you going to see signs and wonders if you're bearing false witness to them? Here we go. False witness is tough. 
Ephesians 4.24, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, putting away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Now bearing false witness is more than lying. Lying, lying as we think of lying is nothing different than you lying trying to cover up something that you did wrong. That is a basic lie. You're trying to protect yourself. Yeah, well, my cell phone didn't work. Well, buy a new one. You know, how, do you, how is it you talk to everybody else except for the ministry? You know? Well, I can't because. Here it comes. It's going to be some lie. It, and it's just month after month, week after week, it's one more excuse. Why don't you just tell the truth? Just, just come clean and tell the truth. I don't know how to love anybody else but myself yet. I'm still selfish. I just still want to do what I want to do, but I'm going to lie to cover it up to make you think that there was a reason for that. That's lying. That is so, that is not even what this verse is talking about. This is nowhere into loving anybody else yet. This is a lot, that form of lying is just your own selfish thing. What this commandment says is don't bear false witness with someone else. In other words, don't preach a gospel to them that's not true. This, this commandment is about loving others. Yeah. Your idea of thou shalt not lie is all about loving you. Yeah. Bearing false witness. 33,000 denominations are breaking this commandment right here. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, a preacher walks to the pulpit and says, Jesus did away with the law. You are bearing false witness. You tell people that tithing is an old covenant thing has been done away with. You are bearing false witness causing them to be in poverty and lack. I mean, I'd go to other countries, you know, Central South America, and I would teach them about giving. I mean, I remember we, what, in Portugal? Was it Portugal? We received like a million dollars in the offer. I understand. Of course, it was about 23 cents. We weren't there to get rich. We was teaching them the only way you're going to prosper is give. Yeah. Well, we turn around and put the money back in. The whole 23 cents. No, bearing false witness is teaching a gospel that people will never change, never turn around, never be saved, never come to repentance. Yeah. And here it is. Yeah. Just you bear false witness because you want them to like you. I know no one here likes me, but I'm not bearing false witness either. I understand. I understand. But once you get saved from sin, once you get turned around, once you, you get past just loving God and start loving others, you'll say, thank you, Bishop. I finally found life. I finally found my purpose now. Am I making sense to you? Forgot where I was at. <clears throat> bearing false witness. How many wants to take this step? I repent for preaching false doctrine. I repent for lying and deceiving others. I will speak truth. The Word of God is truth. I will speak truth to every man. Amen. Last step. There's one grain left in it. <laughs> it's hanging on there. <laughs> We're wrapping this up. Hallelujah. You're stealing my grain of sand now. Settle down. Exodus 20 and verse 17. Thou shalt not covet. Okay, covet. What a word, right? <clears throat> it means... Kamad, it means to delight in, to beauty, to greatly beloved, to covet, uh, delectable uh, thing, a, a great delight, desire, lust, pleasant thing, precious thing. So if that helps you, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. 
We don't because we got the nicest one on the block. Everybody else's house, we don't covet their house. So that's back to don't steal. Because if I give, then I'll be blessed and I won't want what somebody else has anyway because God's blessed me. But don't covet the neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. I don't have a problem with that either. I don't know what they see in her. You know what I mean? <laughs> nor the, uh, his maidservant, nor his, or his manservant, nor his maidservant. See, that's the problem with some women. You know, the gardeners out there, and they're thinking the husband's at work, and he's looking pretty sharp with that no shirt on with all those muscles. I'm trying to make it plain. Are, are you with me? Or you're home watching soap operas. Or do not covet his ass. That's what it says here. You know, I don't know. <sighs> Nor anything that is thy neighbor's. I mean, he tries to just walk it right through. So my wife is going to hopefully repent as I <laughs> go through this. James 1.14, but every man is tempted when? He is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. So don't covet. Don't, don't start looking at what your neighbor has or you're going to delight in it and, and want it and desire it and, and think about what it would look like in your yard, in your house, in your possession. And... You start visualizing this, and pretty soon that's going to conceive, and the next thing you know, you're going to be over there in the dark trying to get it. And that's going to bring forth death, because somebody's going to shoot you when you're stealing that stuff. All right, 2 Timothy 3, 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Uh, hard to deal with situations. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous. This is going to be huge in the last days. There's a lot of other things that is the list here, but, you know, it goes on basically to say they're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We started this out with what? Love God and love others. But when we start loving what others have, we love that more than we love God. So there's no way we're going to have any signs, wonders, and miracles. Because we've quit loving God because we love stuff. And we want the stuff that somebody else has. Have you ever heard this, greener on the other side of the fence? Have you ever gone on the other side of the fence and found out it's not? Unless your snowblower gets off the pavement and hits the, hits the grass, hits the sod. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Last scripture, Ephesians 5.5, 5, it says, For this you know that no whoremonger, we read that one before, but in the, in the other part of it, it says, Nor a covetous man. No covetous man has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of Yahovah. These are serious situations. Now here's, here's the problem. You've got a ton of churches that have been lied to, bear false witness that says, well, these things have been done away with. So they don't even know that they will not have no inheritance in the kingdom because they're not doing anything about these 10 simple steps to signs, wonders, and miracles. And if you think about these 10 steps, it, it just makes sense. Like, love God? And, and, and don't have any other gods before him? And respect his name and his call and his purpose? And learn his will and purpose? And honor those who have respect due to them? Don't kill anybody. Love people. 
Don't steal from them. Don't tell them what they want to hear for your own benefit. And don't take their stuff. King David took a man's wife just because he could. It always brings forth death. This stuff brings forth death at the end. I encourage you, want signs, wonders, and miracles? Well, you have to love God. And you have to love Him more than on Sunday. And then you have to love Him more than just be on the receiving end. You have to get on the giving end. Yeah. Are you with me? There's a couple groups of people in the church. The ones that's running sound and video and cameras and playing music and camera workers and coffee makers and children's teachers and pastors and staying at the church half the night getting stuff I want done. <laughs> Prayer and blogging. and there's, there's people that do things and then there's people that just sit on the receiving end of all the people that do things. Yet You don't love people yet if you're just on the receiving end. You're still just working on loving God with your whole heart. And that's great. So those of us that want to actually love people, you're the ones we're going to love. We're going to love you until you finally get past yourself. You quit being a baby. One young man just grabbed me before service. He says, I've got to start doing something around here. Amen. Amen. Greg, Reverend Connie. Reverend Connie, Greg. <laughs> you, see, you see this group of people here that <clears throat> don't want to covet things because they, they want to give you something they have. They're here to say, hey neighbor, I know you've got some stuff, but I've got some stuff that you don't have. I mean, you got a nice house, you got a nice wife, you got a nice, but you know you're not happy. And I want to give you something that I've got. And I finally crossed over from trying to get in my whole life. I crossed over one day and I started giving. I gave this building, I gave my cows, I gave my farm, I gave my tractors. I've had a life of giving everything that I have. When something comes into my hands, I give it away. I'm not giving my wife away, though. I just th thought I'd stop with that. <clears throat> but I have given her to God. No different than I've given everything to God. What am I talking about? It, are you getting the flow here? I, I'm, I'm talking about love God and love people. I repent of covetousness. I repent of my lust for things that belong to others. I repent for loving things more than God. I receive my forgiveness. I receive my inheritance found in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Amen. I mean, it just feels really good now after going through all this. Yay? So, summary, don't kill. Respect human life. Don't commit adultery. Purity in relationships. Don't steal. Be honest. And uh, don't bear false witness. Get into truthfulness. Don't covet. Be content with what you have. You'd be surprised that what you have is really what God has given you and it doesn't cause any sorrow. Now, my last statement is the minstrel is coming. I don't expect anyone to change. Without a touch of God on your life. 
I want you to all know that you've probably tried these things a few times, tried to quit some of these things, tried to change your mind about these things. And then you realize, uh, wow, I did it again. How many would have to say, yeah, you know, I repented of these things and then I did it again. How many would acknowledge I, I did it again? And then, just so you know, I understand that it gets to a point where you almost don't want to ask God to forgive you anymore. You don't even want to tell him that you messed up again because you're almost embarrassed that you've done it so many times. But that's, that's not truth. I want to... I want to give you a true witness. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and has the legal right to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Well, is there, do I cross the line when it doesn't work anymore? I haven't yet. I haven't yet. When I miss it, I fall short. I say this prayer as if I've never said it before. Because if I actually confess my sin, he doesn't know that this is not the first time. That's it. Exactly. Because he he'd forgiven me for the last time. Exactly. You know, like three hours ago. Yes. Oh yes, sir. So this is my first time. Father, I've sinned. I confess it as sin. I confess it as missing the mark. This is not loving you and loving people. I'm not loving people today if I'm doing this. So I confess it. And he says, oh, son, I forgive you. Thank you for acknowledging that. Now I just cleanse you from all unrighteousness because I so desire to live in and through you to touch other people's lives that I so freely forgive you and cleanse you. Because I love people. And I have to have somebody to love those people through. Amen. How many understands God's desire to live and work through you? Whew. Let's worship Him. Let's love Him for forgiving us and making us clean. At least for another 20 minutes. Well, what happens when I leave here and tomorrow morning? Well, listen to the message again and go through it again. And you keep doing that until... You love God and you love others. And all of a sudden you look back and say, wow, I crossed over into a new dimension. Did you get anything out of this today? Did I do better or, you know, not much? Okay, hallelujah. I'm working at it. I love you all. Be blessed.